Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is all about vintage. I have um, my collection of vintage perfumes here, and then I have some vintage books that are like my favorite vintage books. So I wanted to do like a perfume and a book. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about why I like the perfumes or what they meant to me. These are not perfumes that you're probably gonna wanna run out and buy. A lot of them you probably can't even buy. They are dated, they are th but they hold memories for me. So these are not perfumes that you're gonna wanna run out and get and drown yourself in because they're, most of them are kind of bombs because they're, you know, olden day perfumes or whatever. A couple of them are not. A couple of them are still completely 100% relevant. Some of them are not. Um, and then I have some of my favorite books that um, I was gonna do vintage subjects, but then I thought that's gonna get too confusing. I just did actual like vintage books, like books written like a long time ago that are some of my favorites. Um, okay, so I guess I'll start, I'm gonna start with a book. My favorite vintage book, obviously, Sylvie Plath, The Bell Jar. This is one of my, probably in my top 10 list of favorite books of all time. Anyone who's a huge reader has probably read this. Um, this is, it's about Sylvia Plath, but she, it's not a bio, it's not an autobiography. It's, I think it's considered a novel, but it's obviously based on her life and especially her young life. She was a troubled young girl, but also a very brilliant poet. So this is the story of, I think it's up until she's like 25 years old or something. So it's when she was younger. So this is one of my very favorite vintage books. Okay, so I'll start with my Ralph Lauren Safari. Guys, this is a really, really special perfume. I remember when this came out, it was just like all the rage. And this is a small bottle, but it came in this beautiful crystal circular bottle. Anybody that wore a Safari will remember that beautiful bottle. This is like, actually, an extremely unique, sexy, beautiful perfume. I'm kind of scared to wear it because it is, it's, it's, you know, it's a retro, it's a vintage fragrance. It's strong. It was strong. I remember it was strong even when I wore it. But I, I remember I wore this the summer before I went to college. I think I wore it before that, but that's what I remember. I worked at a restaurant the summer before I went to college and that's what this, I, when I smell this, I'm standing in that restaurant um, and I can see all the people that were working there. I can see, I can just see. So I have so many memories tied to this perfume, but this is Safari by Ralph Lauren. If you were, let's see, 1993. If you were a teenager or a young adult in 1993, you probably wore this. Okay, so another awesome vintage book, obviously Rebecca by Daphne De I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Guys, this is this book is so good and it is a goth. I think it's like the original, well it says the classic tale of romantic suspense, but I think this is kind of the original gothic book. It's a story of Rebecca is is has already she's not there anymore. So it's but but they remember Rebecca. Um, I don't wanna, but this is a must read um, for anyone who likes dark and twisty books, anything like that. This is so, so good. This is a famous, famous classic novel. So Rebecca, that's awesome. Okay, so my next, whoa, okay, guys. Dolce & Gabbana Red. Okay, so this came out in 1992, because I did some research on this. I bought it, I would have been, it would have been 1993 or 1994. But I remember when this came out, it was Dolce & Gabbana's first fragrance, and it was like the hottest thing in the 90s. It was the hottest thing, like every, girl wore this. It was considered extreme. It was kind of like the first really hot designer perfume. I mean, there had always been Lancome, Clinique, that kind of stuff, but this was kind of like Dolce & Gabbana. It was like 
Ooh, you felt really cool if you were wearing this. This is a bomb. This is aldehydic. This is just, I mean, it, it is just, I don't even know how to describe this perfume. It definitely smells like red. Um, it, and I wore this every single day for probably two years. And the memories that I have when I smell this, oh my goodness, this is a very dark and brooding, I've said this before, but this is what I think all the girls would have been wearing in the movie Girl Interrupted if it was made in the 90s. So like, it's a very dark and brooding fragrance. Um, it just reminds me of like tr troubled, troubled girls in their 20s. Probably because I was somewhat of a troubled young girl in my 20s when I was wearing this, but that's what it smells like to me. I have a lot of memories tied to this. I just can't even begin to tell you. So I keep, I keep all, I don't wear this either. It's just way too strong. It would probably give me a headache now. These are both also vintage. These are the original. I bought these off eBay. So these are also old. In addition to being vintage, they're also old bottles. So like I bought these and they had already been sprayed. They both smell exactly the same. I would just be, I would, some of it fell out. Oh my goodness, some of the Safari came out and it smells, oh, is this leaking? Oh my gosh, you guys, the bottle was open. No wonder it was feeling weird to me. Oh my gosh, a little bit dropped out. It smells so good. I think I might have to wear this today in a little bit, but I'm gonna literally have to like spray it on a Q-tip and like, cause it's so strong. Okay, so another really good vintage book. I don't know when this was, I don't, I don't know if this is that vintage, but it's a vintage subject. And it's, I think this is my all time favorite book I ever read. It was called The Reader. Y'all, I read this in one day. Now it's not super long, but I read this in one day. I could not, I read the entire day. I never stopped reading. It was that good. And I remember like at the end of the day, I was in the bathtub, I was still reading it. I couldn't, I was like, I cannot even stop to bathe. I have to read this and I finished it and I was sobbing, crying. And then a movie has come out with um, Kate Winslet. <sighs> and one of the Fines brothers, the older one, I cried and sobbed at the movie too. I don't even know how to describe this book, you guys. Um, it is, you have to read this book if you're, if you're a reader. It is a heartbreaking, moving, beautiful love story but it's also super kind of dark and twisty too. It's just, it's so good. So this is my, oh, that Safari smells so good. Um, this is my third vintage book that I absolutely love. Okay, so moving on. This one is still very wearable, but it is a vintage fragrance. This is Calca Flores by Ubagant. This is so vintage that this was formulated in like 1902. This is like the oldest, like one of the oldest perfumes in the world. Not this bottle, obviously, but the formulation. And they have stuck, I think, I don't think that they've really, I mean, they've probably obviously reformulated it due to ingredients not being available or whatever, but it's the same, it's the same original smell. Princess Diana wore this on her wedding day. This is just a classic, it's a very dry and dusty floral. To me, it smells like a wedding bouquet that's been hum, hung upside down and gathered dust, but it still smells like flowers. It's gorgeous. This I have been wearing since I was in high school, and I still wear it. Um, it's it's a vintage perfume that but that will never. I think this is the only perfume I've ever smelled that could have been made in 1902 and still smells good in 2020. It's a classic fragrance. I would suggest this for anybody that is a fragrance collector. It is just a must-have perfume in your collection. It is just the smell is just like nothing. And the quality is still so good even today because this company has retained their integrity. Um, Hubicon, I, ha I own many of their fragrances. They're just a wonderful French perfume house that is just, they're just a cut above everything else in my opinion. So this is Calca Flores, which I think means bouquet of flowers or I don't know. A bunch of flowers. I think it means a bunch of flowers or something like that. It's not a floral. It's not like one of those like heady, like where you're getting a headache and it hurts your nose kind of florals. It's not like that. Okay, so another book. Okay, so this is a vin this is not a vintage book, but it's a vintage story. This is the Secret Life of the Lonely Doll. Oh my goodness, you guys. So this was so in 1957. 
a woman wrote these books called The Lonely Doll. Um, and they were famous. You can kind of see a little bit of the cover right there. Um, I actually did, after I read this, I read this a long time ago, and I got my daughter the books. They're so freaky. This woman who wrote these children's books in the 1950s was like crazy. Like she and her mother, it was like Grey Gardens. Like her and her mother, I mean, it was bizarre. And this is the, this is the story of the woman that wrote the books. Oh my goodness. If you guys like biographies, memoirs, this is not a memoir though, because, but, but anything like about somebody really, really weird. Oh my goodness. You guys have to read this. This is one of on my all time favorite. This and running with scissors are like my all time favorite nonfiction stories. Okay. All right, so the next vintage fragrance I have is called, <laughs> oh my goodness, this is Nude by Bill Blass. I wore this all through high school. It's, I think you could still wear this. This is a very deep, musky fragrance. It's definitely got a little bit of a vintage vibe, but I would say this is another one, um, the red, well, a couple more. This is still kind of wearable. You'd have to apply it really lightly. The problem is that with this fragrance is the opening. The opening, and it lasts about an hour, is very vintage feeling. It's very, like, oh my gosh, just, I feel like I'm in 1980. But then after it dries down, it's the most wonderful. It, this is supposed to smell like warm skin. And it does. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. I love this. I will always have it. It smells the same to me. I bought this bottle new off Amazon, actually. But this was formulated a long time ago. It smells the same to me, though. I don't think they've changed this much. So to me, this is still the same fragrance I wore in high school. And I love it. I have a lot of memories tied to that perfume as well. Okay, so, oh my goodness, you guys. Another great vintage book is The Bad Seed. I know everybody's heard about The Bad Seed. There was a movie made in the 1950s, a black and white movie. This is about a little girl who is a bad seed. Um, I, a lot of people know this story, um, but she is this young girl who just innately is born and does bad things. It's, 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 it's fabulous. It was, it was written in the 50s, um, but it is just still one of the best kind of dark and twisty, weird books. So anyone that's a, that's a, a reader, you need to buy this, have it in your collection. I think I got this at like a half price books type or maybe even like a Goodwill. I love this. There's a ton of different, you know, covers to this book, but I love this one. So this is an awesome book. Okay, so my next one is, is it's it's not as vintage. This, this is from the 90s. No, this is from the late 90s. The reason it's really vintage though is because it's not made anymore. This is Betsy Johnson, Hello Girlfriend. This was made in Betsy, for Betsy Johnson's boutique. It was only sold in her boutiques. This is a reformulation that came out several years. At, this one went out first, then she relaunched it, brought this back, which is, is, is it's like 90% of the same smell. And then this one, you can't, get, you can't get these anymore. I had to buy both of these off of eBay. I had to pay quite a bit for them, but this is a great smell. I wore this all in my young 20s. So I graduated from the the red, the red, and straight to this probably. I think that's what I did. So this was like age 20 to 23. So I have a lot of really good memories associated with this perfume. Um, it's, this is also my all-time favorite perfume of all time. Um, this is just, this smell was so special to me and so wonderful. And I just, the, the way it smelled was the most wonderful thing. Um, again, these are old bottles. They still smell pretty good to me, but I'm scared to use it now because I don't ever want to run out. But this is another one of my favorite vintage perfumes. Oh gosh, I've lost my place on my books. Okay, so the next, I mean, these are both, I'm just gonna do these together. So I'm a huge Sylvia Plath fan. Y'all, This, these are her journals. Look at this. So Sylvia Plath kept journals from the time she was a teenager until she died. I think there's one, I think there's a journal like three days before she died. Those are really hard to read. Her husband found all her journals after she died um, and had them published. So I, I mean, look at how small the writing is. 
this would probably be a good one to get on your Kindle, but I just, I, I don't do as much anymore, but I used to keep this on my nightstand and I would just read it. I would literally just open two pages. She's in the mental hospital. My favorite ones, she's in the mental hospital describing um, the other patients, the lady she's in the room with. Oh, it's just fascinating. You know, Sylvia Plath is a poet, so some of the stuff reads, it's really pretty heady, and some of it's kind of a little bit like, but then there's some in there where she's just like real. She's just like a real person writing how she's feeling, and that, those are my favorite parts of this. But I mean, it's really big. This is like a table, a coffee table book. That's kind of how I use it. I would, I would, I just leave it out. I think the cover's beautiful too. This is one of my favorite pictures of her. This is the night she graduated from college I think pretty sure this is when she graduated from Smith is that that night how she's holding her rose or somebody's giving her a rose but and then this one is letters okay so it's the same kind of thing so after she died her mother published all the letters that she had written home to her mom it's full of pictures of her and her mom um, so it's the same kind of thing they're literally letters I mean they're dated they're dated, and she just tells her mom, like, what's going on? What's happening? Um, talks about her marriage to Ted Hughes, which was a hot mess. Um, I think I, I, I read this entire thing. I actually read this from cover to cover because it was that, like, it was so good. And it has it all broken up into years. Um, I just I just saw one. Yeah, so it has it all broken up into years. So, like, she still is writing. She, this is her with her two children. And she's still writing her mom letters. I mean, she writes her mom letters all the same as she did her journal. So poets just love to write, so they just write everything down. So I love this. That's also, I mean, this is a vintage kind of situation. Okay, so my two last ones. Okay, so design. Design is, I mean, you can tell by the bottle, this is an 80s perfume. But I love it. I actually wore this when I was like in middle school. And I found, I've had a friend of mine at camp, sleepaway camp, that wore this. We were like 12 years old. And the smell, I was, I was obsessed with perfume even when I was 12 years old. And she would like run by me at camp, like during the athletic stuff. And I'm like, what, what is that smell? That smells so good. And she, it was design. <laughs> so I wore it in middle school and like probably a little bit, maybe like my freshman year of high school I probably wore it so I wore it to death and then I forgot about it and then I saw it like in a CVS somewhere I was like for like $15 I bought it, it smells exactly the same it's the exact same formulation there's not one difference this again is a very musky I don't know how you, I would I'm not even trying to explain this perfume this to me is you could probably still wear it in small doses um, but I just did the memories of this I can still see that girl running around at sleepaway camp and I just was already like obsessed with perfume so that's design and then this is probably <laughs> I love this this is Revlon unforgettable so I also wore this in high school this is like reminds me of the holidays because I wore this in the winter of like my sophomore and junior year of high school and me, of course, see, that's the thing. Like, back in the day, everybody wore the same perfume. I don't know if it's still like that now, but, like, all of these perfumes, like, me and, like, three of my friends would wear them, which I think is also why the memories are so strong attached to them. Actually, every single one of these, not this one. I was the only girl I knew that wore this, but the rest of them, a bunch of other people wore. So it, it really reminds me of that, like, time because it's almost like everybody smelled like that. But me and my best friend in high school wore this and we both wore it and we would get it at like CVS or I don't know the drugstore and we just loved it we would go by and this was the only size it came in and we would just like drown ourselves in it and then of course we would run out we'd go get another one and we wore it every day and it just reminds me of sitting actually it, what it reminds me of because sophomore junior year we were driving we were starting to drive and we would go off campus lunch together and that's what that rem this reminds me of because I think maybe we would spray it when we got in the car because of course we had it in our purse or whatever but it reminds me of being in the car with her and going off campus lunch that would have been my senior year so I must have still been wearing this my senior year oh my goodness just such good memories attached to this I just absolutely love it again I mean the only one yeah, I don't really wear them I wear the Calca floors and I wear the Betsy Johnson one 
And I think I might wear the Safari one today just because I already spilled a little bit on myself. Um, and these are some of my favorite vintage books. I recommend all of the books, the perfumes, use your own discretion. <laughs> uh, you know, some of them are just, like I said, I don't really wear these. I mean, you can see I don't really wear these much, but they're just fun. Every once in a while, I like to open them up and smell them and spray it on a card and just like keep it on my nightstand or something. And it just reminds me of years past. So it's one of my favorite things to do. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this vintage video. Um, subscribe to my channel, please. I'm going to try and I think what I'm going to try and do going forward might be like, like this, like doing books and perfume that I feel like goes together. I think that might be really cool. I've seen like people putting together books with like outfits or perfumes with, I don't know. I've seen similar stuff to that. I think it's really interesting. So I think I might do like a perfume and a book together or something like that. But anyway, um, I will work on that and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.